Hello and welcome by the Orchid Saga. Today we have another care collab for you guys. Um, so there will be uh, uh, more participants as uh, usual in this care collab. I will have the names uh, in the screen now. Um, probably on a picture so it's a bit uh, easier to read. I uh, need to figure it out but you will see them now. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to read them. Uh, you can uh, uh, out loud because uh, I mentioned to mispronounce, mispronounce quite many uh, of those channels and I'm sorry for that you guys but I, I try my best but I think this is the better uh, solution so yeah these were the uh, participants for this uh, care collab as, uh, as I'm, uh, I am of course <laughs> and I have their uh, links in the video description so I really would suggest to check out their channels just to compare because these care collabs are uh, like the word suggests, we're giving our care to you guys, and then I think uh, it's up to you to see which one suits you the best. If you would like to uh, uh, buy a Sibidium, if you don't already have it, or probably have one, but it doesn't well for you, uh, hopefully you will find your information here. But never forget, this is just how I grow, how we grow, with our climate and our circumstances. It's not only the climate, it's also your personal lives, how many times you can water, etc. per week. Uh, for me, I, I don't have always uh, enough time to uh, uh, water them daily or every few days. So therefore, I uh, like to grow uh, basically all my orchids in self-watering or semi-hydroponic. These days it's more uh, self-watering, but the exception is here uh, on my Sibidium. I have this in the um, almost old-fashioned way of uh, semi-hydro. And on the back I have two holes in a pot. I will show them to you, uh, uh, yeah, let's say in a minute, but I can try to move it around. I hope this works. Yes. Um, here are two holes. I'm going to zoom in. So I think you can see them now. So this is the water level, as soon as it goes uh, up these two holes, it will flush out. So like I said, the old fashioned <laughs> semi hydroponic So yeah, this is my Sibidium, and you probably noticed these beautiful leaves. Yeah, it's a bit of a sad story, because last year I put this one straight away from outside the green, up from inside the greenhouse, where the temperatures are very comfortable comfort, uh, warm, <laughs> for me that's comfort. Uh, in this particular area, this is the coldest uh, area of my greenhouse, but now I'm going to zoom in. You can see it's 18 degrees with a beautiful humidity level of 65. That's my uh, most uh, wonderful <laughs> um, level of humidity because then the aerial roots of the plants will not uh, dry out. And I also do not get mold, so if I go too high, there will start uh, will start some mold uh, in the pots because they are always standing in water, of course. So yeah, but this is cold damage from last year, and I learned my lesson. I will wait longer. I uh, am in uh, some Facebook groups, also from the Netherlands, where people, um, yeah, uh, post when they put the symbiums outside, and I follow that uh, those gu guidelines. Basically, I did put them outside uh, as soon as I saw those messages. But I live uh, very close to the sea, so my climate here is a bit different than more land inwards. It's uh, warmer, generally speaking, there, especially in uh, spring and summer. Here it takes a little bit longer to warm up in my area. So yeah, I put it outside and it was too cold. It was not freezing cold, but way too cold. It was probably a few degrees above uh, zero. And from 80 going down to 3 degrees, for example, Celsius, is a differentiation of uh, 15 degrees. That's way too much. And this plant uh, couldn't establish quick enough, so therefore it uh, did get some cold damages. My fault, I, I learned my lesson, and yeah, she's remembering me uh, of these, uh, yeah, this, that... Uh, every day because of the leaves are uh, as they are. We have some more spots here. So that's why you see those spots. So hopefully next year around this same time it will look better. So that's the first thing that happened. Second thing is uh, it's obviously in bloom, yes, and it has a third spike over here that is browning up. It had a total of five spikes this year. It started with two, I think it was in uh, November. 
But I have thrips. This uh, uh, seems to be a thrip magnet. It's crazy. I always, always, always have thrips on the bloom. So I treat them, but the blooms don't like it. So therefore you see this kind of trouble going on. And you can see here's another, here's a, I think this is trip, yeah. Right above my thumb, a little black spot. There's a crazy thrip there. So let's get it out of there. It's now, so it's now gone. But you can see no black spot anymore. So that was a trip again. So after this video, I will uh, cut flower spikes. I'm that desperate. Yes, I, I tried everything. And here and there, I do get a beautiful bloom. But yeah, the thrips, they drive me crazy. And this one, this is how it should look. This is a very nice, fresh bloom. Beautiful. Nice yellow, red, and some orange colors in there. But yeah, the thrips. So I cannot get rid of them. Oh, uh, look at here. Do you see that? Those two black spots running around. Thrips. Thrips. And they are gone. But I saw, yeah, I see more even there. So, and I just treated this one. So I will have to cut off the spikes. And um, I have here and there some thrips on my other plants, but not as much. This one is always covered in them. So yeah, that's a sad story. But yeah, it did uh, bloom with five spikes for me, but that's why you don't didn't see it on my channel as much, because it doesn't look very nice because of the thrips. So the care, the, well, the general care that I give uh, my uh, cymbidium is most of the time, because this uh, cymbidium, uh, the cymbidium most of the time is like a little bit more feed. Uh, so I do give this my uh, leftover water from the Fendas, and that's mostly around, in winter, around 200 parts per million. In summer it goes up to 400, 450. In between, I must say that um, when I water it with 200 parts per million in winter, the next week I will give it only about 50. So the regular uh, water that I will give to my other plants, this one will receive that as well. So keep it a little bit lower on the parts per million on the feeding level in winter because it doesn't take as much but as soon as it starts to grow again with those new um, uh, canes new bulbs it definitely uh, needs some more um, feed as you can see for example this one is a very huge bulb that one did, was already there so uh, when i get it it's actually a gift this ambidium and the uh, next that bulb is uh, my bulb, so to speak, and this one in the front. So they are a bit smaller. So it could give, uh, could gi uh, get a bit, bit of better care. And I only have one Sibidium, because to be honest, I like them, but not as much as the rest. I like, this one is a gift, this is a special one, I really like it. I really love the colors, but I'm not, uh, I don't have plans to buy anything more, Sibidium wise So, uh, because it, as you can see, it does take, uh, quite a lot of space with all those very long uh, leaves and I don't want to use all those space here because I like uh, the other plants a little bit better so that's that's just me being honest but uh, this one I really enjoy don't get me wrong and that's why I try to keep treating those flowers for thrips but these spikes were trinomers very very big this one didn't even open a single bud so yeah, it's very sad. I hope the other ones will do a bit better with their subidiums. Uh, considering the circumstances, I think this is a very uh, strong plant. It did uh, get quite something to deal with. <laughs> and so therefore I think it doesn't look that bad. But I will definitely try to do a better job this year. So next time uh, I hope we are going to visit the subidium maybe in, in a year or something. I, will, uh, I hope it will look uh, healthier than uh, than today so as usual if you have any questions or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below i really want to thank you for subscribing to my channel i had a, a really uh, quite a few uh, new subscribers so big thank you and of course for the guys who already were here 
Big thank you. If you're new here, uh, please feel welcome. I really enjoy uh, making these videos and I'm always open for questions or suggestions. So uh, if you have anything, please let me know. For now, I hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye bye.